this song, and then you'll have to stand as quiet as you can during an apostolic reading, and then we're going to do your special music piece. Now, congregation, just because you see them up here doesn't mean you're supposed to listen. That's two songs away. This song you sing with them. So join us in praise to you, and they're going to do some actions for you as well that you can join with if you'd like. Ready, kids? Praise to you. Get your hands in prayer. Get your hands in prayer. Everyone, ready, kids? Come on. Follow Carol now. Praise to you.
here for this morning will be Amber Olson.
party. And it's that text that Everett read for us this morning from Deuteronomy. Let's look at that text again from Deuteronomy chapter 14. Set up, let's say it together. Set apart a tithe for all the, let's say it together. Set apart a tithe of all the evil of your seed that is brought in yearly from the fields. In the presence of the Lord your God, in the place that he will choose as a dwelling for his name, stop there. Dwelling, the place that God chooses as a dwelling for his name. Right here, people, right? Let's continue. You shall eat the tithing of your grain, your wine, and your oil, as well as the first things of your herd and flock, so that you may learn to fear the Lord your God always. And then it goes on a little later in this 14th chapter of Deuteronomy. It says, in your household and in the household of God, in God's name, rejoice forevermore. So, this is God instructing us to have a party. And it's a lot easier to talk about a party than it is to talk about money, right? A lot easier to talk about a party than, than money. This is, in the fullest of Old Testament understanding, this is God speaking to God's people about the time. The people of God were encouraged to take one-tenth of their income, that is, the, the yield of their fields, their flocks, their herds, and they were to take it to the temple, or they were to take it to the church. Not just to give to the church, but to have a part of it. To partake in that 10%. To have a part of it. To give your income and your wine and your oil. 10% and to throw a party. They were to have an enormous extravagant once a year party in the presence of and under the lordship of God Almighty. Once a year. Big, big, big party. So no more bachelors, of course. I'm not going to just talk about parties. I am going to talk about money. I am going to talk about, I am going to talk about money specifically about money in the church, and uh, let me remind you that the encouragement to tithe in Deuteronomy was, first of all, an, an encouragement to have a beautiful celebration, to have a big party. That was the first and foremost, the idea of the tithe. We are to be reminded of all of God's good gifts. All of the things that God gives us are a gift from heaven above. Everything that we have. Life and all that supports life, everything is a gift from God. And the command to tithe was first and foremost an opportunity to remember that in a joyful, tangible way, this is a party going on here. This is a celebration. And you know far better than I how you have been blessed through the years. You know far better than I how God has blessed you. And I think primarily God has blessed us through the people that are in our lives. Or the people that care about us and for the people that we care about. Our, our blessings come primarily through others. Through people. They are a blessing from God. And you know what? Oftentimes, we don't tell the people that are closest to us how much we appreciate them. We don't say that to them often enough. And so, I just want you to do that. I want you to just maybe reach over to the person that's important to you and put your hand on their hand and tell them, thank you for being a blessing to me. Thank you to be a blessing to me. If you're sitting not next to a spouse, that's great. Put your hand. Maybe you're not sitting next to a spouse and it feels kind of awkward to touch hands. So uh, why don't you just give a hug or something to the person sitting next to you? Sure. Or put your arm around the person that's sitting next to you and thank them for being a blessing. There is no guarantee in this life that we will have tomorrow to say that to somebody. So we say it. Thank you. 
share in this life with you. God blesses us primarily through relationships, through our friends, through our enemies. So maybe if there's an enemy sitting around you, close to you today, put your hand on that enemy's shoulder and thank them for being in relationship with you, right? We talked about the first service. Maybe that friend and that enemy is your spouse, right? Because all the time that is the way it is. I've been married for long enough now. Some days your friend, some days your enemy. That's just how, how it is. God blessed us primarily through relationships and through the relationship of the church. That we are together as a family of God. And so we tell each other, what a blessing you are to me. What a blessing you are from a gracious God that I get to share in this little corner of God's world. I get to share in that with you. That is a blessing that God gives to us. God has blessed us through this church, through this building that we call the sanctuary, that we call our home. And that is the greatest I think that I get to do is that I get to help make this sanctuary a home for all of you, to make this sanctuary a home for, for these young ones. This is your home. This place is your home. And so we give thanks to God for that. We give thanks to God for this sanctuary, this place where many of you have brought your children to be baptized here. Where maybe some of you have been baptized in this home, in this sanctuary. Where you have gathered maybe to be married to one another. Where you've gathered maybe to mourn the loss of a loved one. You see, this place is also a blessing from God. A sanctuary that means home for us. A place where we receive the bread of life and the cup of salvation. And we receive the blood, the blood of Christ and the cup of salvation from each other as well. So what a blessing you are. What a blessing you are to so many. So the blessings take the form of people. The blessings take the form of this home, this sanctuary. The blessings take the form of our faith where we gather, where we can stand together and and say together words like the Apostles' Creed, or where we can stand and sing one of our favorite hymns, or, or maybe a, a, a new song that, that we just learned this morning. That's where God's blessings come to us. People shudder when preachers start talking about money. People don't like it when preachers start talking about money. And preachers are uncomfortable talking about money, but you know what? Your money is a blessing from God as well. And here's three things that we know about money. Tell me if I'm mistaken. We all need it, right? We don't live in a barter society. We all, you all need money, right? We all need money. And usually, we tend to think that we need more money than what we have, right? That's the second thing. First thing, we all need money. Second thing, we tend to think that we need more than what we have. Third thing is that we all have a little anxiety about money. It, am I off the mark here on those three things? Money, we all need it. We all think we need more of it, and we have a little anxiety around it. Am I off key here, Steve, or can you resonate? Can you appreciate this? All right. So we get uncomfortable, I think, when we talk about our money. So we're not going to talk about I can talk about your money. Actually, you have some money with you today. You have a billfold, your purse, uh, maybe a wallet. Why don't you just take that out? Just take that out. Maybe you have something that's valuable. Parents, if you're sitting by one of your kids, lift up one of your kids. Uh, that's valuable, right? Just hold that. Just hold your, your wallet, your purse. Maybe you've got something valuable that's important to you, a ring, a necklace. Just hold that up for a second. Just hold that up.
for it, right? So, uh, uh, but just hold that up. So today we're not, oh, Bible, that's a good one. So we're not going to talk about your money this morning. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to just pass that over to the person to your right. Just give that over. Getting in the car, the 
mom encompassed that then she had the dollar in her hand. She said to her daughter, well, why did you put the dollar, why did you put the quarter in the offering plate and not the dollar bill in the offering plate? And the daughter said, well, I was reminded that God said that God wants givers to be cheerful. And I decided that the best way for me to be cheerful is to keep the dollar and put the quarter in the offering plate. That's the best way for me to be cheerful. And it is true. God says, God wants givers to be cheerful, right? I mean, that's good logic. The, the daughter has good logic. Until you think about the party, right? Until you think about the party that we get to be part of in this life. It makes perfect sense to keep the things that are ours if you don't think about the party that God has given you. The party that God invites you to be part of. So we get to decide, people, what kind of party we're going to host. Now, many of you know, I know some of you do, but in December we celebrated 100 years of this space in December. This building, this sanctuary, 100 years old. Can you imagine that? 100 years people have been gathering upstairs here and downstairs to worship the Lord. That is incredible. So people 100 years ago decided what kind of party that they were going to throw here in this place. And now you get to decide. I mean, you think about that. You get to decide what kind of party will be in this place 100 years from now. Where your grandkids, grandkids, grandkids will be gathered here learning about God and being formed in the faith and gathering for worship, worship that we probably would like right in 100 years. But you get to decide that. Because God is faithful. And God is throwing a party. And God is inviting you to be part of that.